Hey guys, and welcome to another Factorio Friday Facts number 242, Offensive Programming, and I'm joined again by Scarhoof. I'm very offended already. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm super offended. <laughs> Program uh, me to fend speak. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, this is written by Kovrex. Uh, this part is going to be more technical than usual, but might still be interesting to know the background process for some people. So, it's a bit lengthy. I don't want to just read every single thing verbatim, uh, but... Pretty much, I guess there's issues with um, saves loading and experimental. Uh, so 1636 is stable, but as we need to fix some additional bugs, we start releasing uh, releases 37, 42, and so on. Um, from the perspective of the player, there were a lot of new bugs introduced. Um, unloadable saves with train problems or even in famous version 16 that disabled all signals causing train apocalypse with each and even made a baby cry. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there were some... Wasn't it like a issues. seven or eight year old kid? I don't know. I didn't actually see this. I don't think. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember seeing the article or the, the, the forum post. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> yeah, so train signals were completely broken, uh, but most of these problems, apart from the train apocalypse, were actually caused on purpose. It might sound weird, but it should make sense to you soon. So they mentioned offensive programming, and I'm going to let you cover this part because you said you, you have some better information on this. Yeah, so I have a couple friends that are programmers, and um, so I, I pinged him really quick before this, before we uh, hopped on, you know, to, to record, and I was just like, just to, to find out exactly what this means. So there, there's a thing called defensive programming. It's kind of a mindset of how you would do things, and, it, and it's basically determining which, which arguments and which uh, data that, that spits out of your program are to be trusted and which ones are not. Right, so it's basically giving the hierarchy. Um, he said, from a um, from a business standpoint, it would be like you're going to trust automatically, like the program will trust whatever output any of your employees give, but you're going to put in additional um, checks and balances for external vendors. Okay. Right. So that's probably like the best way of doing it. So basically, what what it boils down to is that they trust that the programming is going to. Uh, check for certain errors, like in the case uh, they go on talking about walls, right? You can't place two walls on top of each other, and that would include things like you can't place uh, two blueprints of walls on top of each other, things like that. So the internal code will essentially say, because walls have to connect with one another, we're only going to accept walls coming in a certain way, right? right. If there's already a wall there, you can't try to ever put down another wall. It's just impossible. Well, from what I understand, they must have stripped that out or something like that, or they had removed that chunk of code which turns it from more of a defensive programming to an offensive programming standard where you basically say, you know what, do what you want kind of a thing. We're, we're, we're removing some of those extra checks and balances and we're just going to say, this is the rule, follow the rule. And if it doesn't fit this rule, just kick it out. It just doesn't okay. exist. And so that supposedly is what's corrupting the saves, causing the train apocalypse, all that other stuff. So they got going into a little bit here and there and, um, yeah, so basically it's offensive programming is trust internal, distrust external, as opposed to defensive programming is distrust everybody and do multiple checks. And it slows down the process. It eats up extra CPU cycles when you have to distrust everything, but it's much safer right. in that aspect. Okay. And so yet again, remember that these are experimental updates. Yeah. <laughs> they can important. and will corrupt your world. Yeah. You know, and even though like we are always playing on the latest experimental update, we need to remember that this could cause problems. And same thing with Minecraft. Minecraft, the last uh, this last week, they've issued two uh, snapshots that completely broke all previous saves. Oh my god! Um, in fact, there's a few people out there who have been playing on the snapshots in 1.13 that's coming out, and they can't load their world at all now. It's just it completely wipes everything from the map. So wow. keep that in mind, everyone. Always make backups. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, you know, and always be be you know, don't don't just automatically be on the latest and greatest, uh, because it might not be the greatest. Right. Exactly. So definitely, really good explanation there. Made more sense to me than what he said <laughs> in the Friday facts. Um, so, uh, the so the invariance uh, examples in Factorio. So one of them was that there can never be a wall placed on top of a wall, which is like what you said. So you know, you can't just build a wall over another wall, but with script you can place entities even in a way that they would collide. But in the case of walls, you can't even build two walls on top of each other with a script. The reason for this is that the code connects, uh, walls connect to each other, and since there would be two walls at the same place in multiplayer, it could happen that a neighbor wall piece could connect to different walls for different players, which would eventually could and also did cause desync. So uh, the second part of the problem occurred 
when the deconstruction planner and blueprints came into play as we gradually changed the game in a way that you should be able to mark any area of factory for deconstruction and plan a blueprint over it uh, even before the area was cleaned so suddenly you can have a belt marked for deconstruction with another belt in form of a ghost on top of it like this. Uh, and then the third part of the problem was that we decided that the ghost belts and walls should connect with each other so it looks nice as and explained in our previous Friday Facts. Uh, so then to allow these three things to coexist, we had to make several changes. The first things to change was something you might have noticed. Belt walls get disconnected when marked for deconstruction. So uh, you can see this is kind of what they look like now when you de mark for deconstruction. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second thing was to allow walls or belts um, on top of each other as long as one is marked for deconstruction and other is a ghost, as things marked for deconstruction are not candidates for connection, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. You can imagine that making sure the first variant is still true might not be that trivial. For example, uh, you know, make sure that a ghost on top of an entity marked for deconstruction gets removed when the deconstruction is canceled. Make sure that using teleport fails if the result would be in conflict with the invariant. Make sure that there are not other ways it could happen we are just not aware of. So essentially they're saying, you know, the last point is the biggest one that there's there could be other ways that they're not aware of um, that, that could be causing these problems. So, uh, you know, you didn't want to investigate like super complex desync reports. Um, so, you know, how does he check this without affecting performance in normal games? Uh, you know, because for these things, they have a method we call consistency check, where it goes through the map and checks different kind of integrity stuff. Uh, and the check takes quite some time to perform. So calling it on every save load would affect the game too much so they decide to call it on version transition meaning that like when you if you have a save so you're playing like 1639 and you save a and game you upgrade to 16.40 yeah and you upgrade 16.40 and then load that save that's what he means by a, a version transition mm -hmm. um so they made it so it only triggers on that rather than every save load um so and it also does it on transition of any version of any mod which is pretty big um mm -hmm. it can also be executed manually with that uh the question is uh what you do when the check fails to make sure that it will actually get reported we decided that we can when the consistency check fails the game instantly stops crashes and writes a uh cause and stack trace into a log this forces the user at some at least some of them to give us a bug report so we can try to figure out what is going on so essentially to figure this out they are <laughs> They, they meant for this to happen. That, they, that's the this this thing was here. intended. Everything's yeah. fine. <laughs> it's all fine. The, cra the crashing is normal. <laughs> it's normal. Like so, basically, they're intentionally crashing your game um, to get so they can get, get the this information. Report. Yeah, to get this yeah. bug report and the desync log or, or crash log. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just I guess it's kind of a PSA and apology. I guess yep. in the they're, same they're, thing. They're, they're experimental and people who are running experimental versions there's a there's a handshake agreement here that you're going to uh you know be willing to have your game crash mm -hmm. and you know definitely send in those bug reports to it it obviously it helps helps them uh understand what's going on wrong with the game so they can fix it yeah definitely really important to send those in so uh there's that and then the train bugs so all the train bugs were also originating from the same problem. I figured that the rail signals marked for deconstruction didn't disconnect from the rail and could block building a blueprint with rail signals on top of them. This changed the invariant for the rail signal from always connected to rail, if possible to be only connected when not marked for deconstruction. Uh, most of the parts of the code were fixed properly, but there was one particular piece of code that reconnected signal um, even when marked for deconstruction, which made the internal state inconsistent and the save not loadable until the migration to rebuild rail segments was reactivated for the next version transition. So, <laughs> and the, and that's how you get a train apocalypse. Yeah, that's how you get some train problems. <laughs> and that's why babies cry. Yeah, <laughs> one of the reasons. <laughs> um, so, yeah, essentially, just kind of some behind the scenes stuff and saying, you know, if you get these crashes or it won't load a save right now, it's probably intentional on the devs part to make that happen so they can get this information. Um, again, like Scarho said, if you're going to play experimental, you're pretty much signing up for problems. You know, you have the option not to play them, um, especially at this point, because 16, there is a stable version of it. Like, yeah, it's not like you have to rever like be back in 15 if you, or whatever. There is a stable version of 16. I think it was 
Uh, 16.36. 36. So yeah. you're safe if you want to play on that and still play 16. Anything past that, um, which for most players is not actually going to give you anything, like feature-wise at all, to, mm-hmm. to play. A lot of it was like, some of it was PvP stuff, some of it was Clustorio fixes, um, some of it was just bug fixes and then these problems. So, yeah. You know, if you're worried or whatever, then just stay on 1636 until they declare another stable version and you should be fine. Uh, and then conclusion, so now you know why there are much more crashes when loading games and hopefully hate me less because now you know that it was done in the sake of long-term code correctness. Yep. Yeah, so... Hashtag programmers. Hashtag programmers. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it, it's for the greater good, guys. It's uh, it, It'll help them in the future. Um, and it, it doesn't really sound like it corrupted many saves, more so that it just caused a crash or made the save not loadable in that particular version. Yeah. So it's not. And they like spat out a world. bunch of different versions pretty quick there. Oh yeah, yeah, there were quite a lot. So, but yeah, always, always back up your stuff before you upgrade. That way, you could immediately roll back if you need to. Mm-hmm. It's just a safe way to get into it, or you know, it's a it's a it's a safe habit to get into. Always, always make a copy of your world. I always right click my save and just duplicate it yeah. uh, before I load it up, or or something like that, or um, or I'll duplicate it and give it like an increment, a, a like a .dot a or .dot b mm-hmm. version. That way, Perfect. you can always roll back if you need to. Yep, very good advice for sure. So there it is, guys. Not like the most exciting, but hopefully, explain some of the issues some of you may have it be having, um, and. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Any last thoughts? Nope. All right. Back up your games. Back up your games, <laughs> folks. Uh, this is going to do it. As always, thanks for watching. Leave any thoughts down below. And until next time, we will see you later.